Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to my video. On this video today, we're going to be forming, pouring, and finishing an 8 by 38 concrete patio slab with a broom finish. Now, Darren and I showed up here today to get the forms up. You know, the guy wants two inches of styrofoam under this. He wants wire mesh in this. The homeowner had all the earthwork done for us, so he dug it all out, put in a couple feet of this gravel. It's been raining a little bit, so it's got a little bit of washout on it, but that won't stop us from doing what we need to do. Now we're using 2x12s along the edges, so the edges are going to be 12 inches thick, the middle is going to be 6 inches thick. We got the forms up, we're gluing on some ISO strip right now. When we pour a concrete slab up against a building like this that has a frost wall, we like to keep the slab separate from the building in case the slab ever did want to move. It's not going to break up the slab or affect the building in any way. And then the two inches of styrofoam underneath the slab here help the frost from getting up underneath it and heaving the slab. We live in Maine, so we get a lot of uh, freezing and thawing cycles between, you know, December and March. So a lot of the outside stuff we do has two inches of styrofoam under it. So here's the pour day. We're using high range water reducer in the mix so we can pour a pretty good loose slump with that water reducer. Uh, it doesn't affect the strength of the concrete. The water reducer just helps loosen the slump without adding water. In case you didn't know what that does, that's what it does and we pour it, we use it every single day. This slab has about an inch to an inch and a half slope away from the building. And for you wire police guys, you can see I'm there tugging up on the wire. And once you get the concrete under the wire with those three quarter inch stones in there, the wire doesn't go back down to the styrofoam even when you step on it. Just so you know, that's coming from people that do it every day. <laughs> and that's just the way we do it. A lot of the jobs we go on to, we pull the wire up and don't put bricks under it. So here we are. We got poly up against the house to head to help protect the house from some splatters. Concrete does want to splatter a lot coming out of the chute. We're actually using a front dump truck today. A lot of the pours we do, we don't get the front dump, so we got to control the chute by ourselves. This one worked out pretty good. It was just one load, about 10, 10 and a half yards. And the concrete driver can just control the concrete chute himself. We're getting the edges all magged up underneath that siding and Eric's putting in some rebar around the edges and then we're vibrating the edges really good using our DeWalt pencil vibrator. I'll have a link for that down in the description if you want to check that out. That thing's really handy. And then we string the boards to keep them straight. So what we was doing, we were just tapping out on the, on the kicker to get the board back to where we want it straight. And here we are screeding. And we like you know, when we have a thick edge like this, now one guy could screed this by himself pretty easily, but two guys can even screed it more easily. <laughs> so why not just have two guys do it if you got enough guys? And then you got a guy behind him raking. And we're getting the edges mag beforehand. And then the guy on the outside form that's screeding, you know, he keeps a mag in his left hand. That way he can keep the top of the form nice and clean as he screeds off the top of it. And then Darren in there with a the yellow shirt on the inside is screeding off the wet pad. So you can see how easy that goes with two guys that know what they're doing. Now if you only got one guy that knows how to screed, you know, he can just grab that thing in the middle and just screed it himself. That's kind of what the concrete looks like as you mag it. Eric's making sure they got enough mud and they don't run out. And we got it a little bit low in there, so we had to pull the truck back in just to get a little more concrete back in there. Fill it back up a little bit. We don't want to get too much concrete in there and make a mess. And here I am vibrating that edge. So when we strip that form off, the edge looks nice and smooth. You can see how nice and light that is. It works really easy. And this is how the bull float looks with a, with a water reducer and it makes bull floating simple. So again, we got high range water reducer in this so we can pour it pretty loose. It's about an inch slope so you can still pour it that loose and create a really good slope without it sagging. Just, I mean, that's what the chemical is for to be able to make your job a little bit easier, your life a little bit easier. 
you can see how easy it makes it bow floating right here down and back All right, so it's still pretty soft, but we're going to see if we can get this initial joint cut in. we got three joints to cut, and this thing's pretty deep. You don't want to wait too long, you won't be getting them in with that thing. So if you remember, we went 9 foot 6, 9 foot 6, 9 foot 6. That's going to be where our joints are. So we got to measure it in the front pretty easy. we just got to get a, something to go by in the back. I'm going to see if I can reach out 9 foot 6 with this tape without it snapping on me. Without making too much of a mess. Probably not. Where are we? Nine foot six. Nine foot six. Right there. Alright. That looks pretty good. So we should be able to just take the torpedo joiner and eyeball that joint since it's only an eight foot joint. I gotta do the same on the other side. Tricky one's gonna be this one in the middle. I like this. This Dewalt tape's pretty rigid. Most other tapes would just kind of just kind of fall and break on you. All right, nine foot six. You see that? I'm putting that nine foot six right on the inside of the board. And I'm touching the end of the tape down. Just wiggle it back and forth. Give me a little bit of a line to go by. That's all I need to do for that joint. Touching the end of the tape down. Just wiggle it back and forth. Give me a little bit of a line to go by. I'll show you what I'm going to do here with this thing. So I'm just not trying to make anything special. Just trying to cut the joint down into the concrete. Just moving the rock. This is all we're doing. So we can run our other joiner in there. So I'm just going to kind of eye that across. And push that up like that. Get up to my other mark. Perfect, right there. Now when you're cutting joints like this, you want to go at least 25% of the thickness of the slab. So if you got a six inch slab, you know, you got to go about an inch and a half in order for the joint to be effective as crack control and that's what we found with our experience that's what we like about that torpedo groover you know that's about an inch and three quarters so it'll do four inch slabs six inch slabs and we found that when we use that and then we follow it with this to clean it up this other this other joiner rarely do we ever have any random cracks appear usually always cracks right in the joint so it's it's just to the point where we can stop putting some of the finished stuff on it. You know, Eric went around with the edger and rounded the edges. And now the most of the bleed water is all dried up. We like to wait for the bleed water to dry up before we stop mag floating the surface. Luke's getting the funny float out. He's going he's gonna to mag it for the first time. Generally on broom finish stuff, especially if it's in the shade like this, we have to we mag float it twice. I'm getting my skids out. I'm going to get up right up against the building because Luke can't get up under the siding with that tool. So I'll get up against the, I'll get that one to two foot area up against the building pretty easily. But like I said, we usually have to mag float it twice. You know, the first time like this, initially we just call it the rough mag. Get all our joints cut, get our edges cut. We get the, the surface floated, make everything looking really good. Then we let it dry up a little bit more. And then we come back and we mag it all again really nice and tight. That way the broom finish comes out, you know, like a medium to light broom finish. We don't really want a heavy broom finish on most of the stuff we do. The patios, you know, the pool decks, the sidewalks. We don't want them too rough. You can see how that looks really good right there. So we just, we let the surface dry up really good and then we'll go over it again with the mags. We don't typically hand trowel stuff here in Maine. Remember our concrete has air entrainment in it because of all the freeze and thaw cycles we go through. The air entrainment helps protect the surface against uh, you know peeling and scaling off in the winter. So we don't, we don't typically like to hit it with a hard steel trowel or a Fresno. 
we'll just mag float it again really tight. You can see how it works really good. And then we run the broom right over it right after and you get a nice like light to medium broom finish. Pretty good for just walking on, especially in the winter. And we tell people, we tell people, especially when the concrete's, you know, new like this, you don't want to use de-icing salts on concrete like this, especially if it's under a year old. You know, just use sand. You're going to have to just shovel it off and use sand if you worry about slipping. Because I don't, you know, I don't care. It's 4,000 PSI. It's got air entrainment. It's got microfiber in it. You can put sealer on it, but you still run the risk of the de-icing material, whether it's calcium chloride or just rock salt, damaging the slab. We see it all the time. I don't care how good your concrete is. I don't care how good you finish it, how good you seal it. You're going to run that risk if you use that stuff. You know, and I don't know if, you, if you're if you ever up in the northern New England area and you're out in a public setting, you know, and you're walking down some sidewalks outside of a retail store or a restaurant and you wonder why the surface of the concrete's all peeled off and all the aggregates exposed is because they're just pounding the de-icing salts to that stuff in the winter and the concrete just can't take it. You know, the trouble with that sometimes is it melts ice and snow at such a low temperature that once it melts that ice and snow and any of that any of that melted snow penetrates down into the concrete and then that de-icing material wears off, well, that, that liquid in there now refreezes, expands, and it just pops the surface right off the concrete. So you don't want to do that. Just use sand or kitty litter, I guess. So the process continues, you know, we just we continually just work our way back down the slab. Eric's putting the finish edger on it. Luke's putting the finish groove mark on it as he's out there on the skids once Darren brooms over the groove. And, you know, I'll, I'll hit the edges with the mag float so Luke doesn't have to come all the way back down to the edge by the board. And we just work it together as a team it's, and it works out really, really easy that way. I don't know, you know, why the homeowner only decided to come out eight feet here. I guess that's just what he wanted. What I do suggest to people when they do a patio like this right up against the house is I like them to put a gutter up top so the water doesn't drip off the roof a foot away from the house, which is what this one's going to do. That water, eventually that water will leave a line in your concrete. I don't, you know, eat, yes, concrete's hard, but that constant dripping on it you know every single time it rains you're going to have a little bit of a line in your concrete and eventually eventually you know years down the road it's going to it's going to wear that surface right off and you're just going to see aggregate right there where it drips so i would i would definitely put up a gutter if you're going to do some concrete outside your house like this and we are kind of finishing the tool joint off now this doesn't always come out perfect the first time you know sometimes Sometimes you got to run it through there a couple times, and that's what I'm looking at right here. The I don't like how much paste is coming up on the outside of the joiner tool. So I'm going to get it looking pretty good, and then you'll see what we're going to do here right in a second to clean that up even a little bit better. A lot of the times, you know, because you've run the groover through there a couple times, yeah, so I, I got it looking pretty good, and then Darren's just brooming off that excess paste we don't like having too much paste there on the edge of the tool mark. It just doesn't look too good. So now I'll go back through it, clean that up a little bit better. This concrete was really rocky too. It was just, we, there was a lot of little tiny rocks right at the surface that we're kind of fighting as we're finishing, but we got it to look really good. I can kind of clean up from the board out a couple feet, then Luke can do the rest from right on top. Put a lot of good down pressure on it, make sure the joint looks really good and clean and smooth. And that's basically what the picture frame look is given that the smooth look on the joint and then a smooth look in the groove. I mean a smooth look on the edge. And then Darren just finishes up the brooming marks like that. And if Eric's got any touching up to do on the edger he'll go back and touch that up you know we'll have to you know if we have to rebroom over that little tiny air we'll rebroom it and then re-edge it 
we just want to make sure everything looks good and clean and consistent and that's how you get a really good looking job right there So let me know if you down in the comments what you think the broom came out look look like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. I come out with a couple of concrete videos a week. I help people learn how to do concrete in the concrete underground. Concrete underground link is down below. So if you want to check that out, I can teach you how to do stuff like this with all the training videos in there. Plus, you get access to me in there. Uh, again, thanks for watching the video. Please come on back, and we'll see you on the next one.